Welcome back to SPECT. Today we'll be looking at a Warhammer Conquest magazine. To start with, first thing you get is a beautiful magazine and some paints along with a paintbrush. And that's the key of the value of this magazine. That's only $1.99, but you get over 30 quid's worth of stuff. Inside that magazine, you'll find all the fluff, the lore, information on what's going to appear next, all those kind of little details and whatnot. But the coolest thing about this magazine, uh, even though I've already said it's got the fluff in, it's got a how to build, paint, etc. It's really kind of like welcoming for the community if you're getting started. And I do recommend you just pick this up. I mean, like one ninety nine, you're in for a win. Anyway, uh, checking it out has this lovely little poster in there. I say lovely little poster. It's a massive poster. Uh, but again, we can see a bit more on the future content of the magazine. And there's a lot of content uh, that's coming uh, free with the magazine. And you have to be careful with the term free. Because clearly you have to pay for it. Uh, when I picked these up in the shop, I almost ran out. But I, I paid for them first, but clearly. Anyway, back to what we have in there. The main things is the paints and this paintbrush alone. The paintbrush sells for about £5 a time. It's always worth getting. And the way to maximise value of this magazine is to start off and buy two. When you buy two, you get six models, two paintbrushes and six paints. Now, if you do get into playing the game, right there you have five viable characters and one HQ command. I would also pick up a few other paints. White, a red, a couple of flesh colour tones and a silver. Um, at the end of the day, you could pick these up from Games Workshop or pretty much anywhere else. These will help to increase the value of the content you've already gotten in this magazine. A pair of scissors or, you know, scalpel, pliers, needle nose pliers, um, ruler or a tape measure. Even one of those things is fine as well. These will be part of playing a game and also cleaning up the models and removing them from the sprue. Well, there, that's the sprue. Grab yourself some seasonings. I know it's going to sound weird. We're not, we're not making food here. We're not cooking. Hold on, don't panic. We use these things just to kind of texture the bases and make them look a little bit more realistic. Well, I do anyway. And you can also combine these seasonings with things like flocking from Games Workshop itself. And it makes the bases look really good. There's nothing worse than having a beautiful looking model and they're on a base that looks like it's just plastic. After that person spent all that time painting. It's not nice. But this will help to enhance what you've got. And it's really cheap. Grab those dice from the Yahtzee set. Or from that Monopoly you don't play anymore. Get your hands on some sand. Some glue. Just simple white glue here. And this is to texture bases. Some water. Which is free. Uh, well actually water rates is a thing. And always keep your paintbrush clean and never leave it standing in the water because you'll mess up the nib. Other than that, that should be fine. So let's start with the sprue. You know, taking a closer look at the sprue. Uh, you can see the models there. The camera didn't quite pick up the numbers. But on each sprue, you have a number next to the model piece. Okay. All you're going to do is take that information and put it together with the instructions and we follow it step by step. Kind of like Kinder Eggs, you know, back in the day they used to be Kinder Eggs and you kind of used to put them together and build them until they got dangerous and became choking hazards. And then they gave you the model itself, which was still a choking hazard. But anyway, either way, the coolest thing about these is that you do not need glue. So you can start with this right, right out of the packet. Okay. So take the parts off the sprue, as you can see here. Try and be careful. Do not cut or hurt yourself. Because uh, yourself is a cool person. Especially seeing you came to this channel. So clearly you are a cool person. Like we could all agree with that. Um, some of the parts may come out with a little bit of uh, twisting and false. You know, just the smaller, simpler parts. And what I like to do is take off all the parts correlating to that particular person. So I will just check the instructions and just make sure they're fine. See, see how I almost cut my finger off there. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. 
and we've just got the arm to come out and just the power pack. Oh no, it's a gun and then the power pack if I remember rightly. Now, if you're little and you're starting this, uh, grab your parent to assist you with this, or older sibling, and everything should work out fine. Right, this is where you grab your instructions from the inside of the magazine. So I'm finding here. And just make a comparison of the pieces of what you've got to the actual model you're building. There we go. So Space Marine Intercessors. And I'm just here aligning the model pieces to make sure I have everything off the sprue that I need to build this character. And you'll see how easy this is just to push together. Well, after I struggle with this bit just a little, so much so that I'm blocking out the camera. There we go. Yes, we've got the arm there, the arm of command, because clearly when you're pointing, it's it's command. Yeah, let's put it in the right direction. Because he's pointing up like he's looking for a UFO. And that's not really what I'm looking for right there. Now this one, it's for the shoulder, is a little bit more trickier. But if you come down at the angle that the attachment pin is on, it's a lot easier. But I would remind you just to remove the little bit of the kind of leftover plastic there. You just take off the sprue just to help them slot back in properly, like the arm there and that joint. Otherwise it will kind of like roll around for a bit. It can be a pain in the butt. I'm just cleaning that up. And there we go. So the bases are slotter bases, so they go straight in. If you don't have slotter bases, so you happen to lose them, uh, one thing you could do is just cut those bases right off the bottom. Let's see that little bar there? You can cut that off from underneath the feet, get as close as you can. And then you can near enough create your own base with like additional bits of like core core board or what have you. But for now, this will do. Now attach the backpack and that model is completed. There we go. And you can see the other model there. Just see it doesn't take that long, the other two. Now inside the magazine you'll come across a lot of colour schemes on how you want to paint your model. Uh, it's up to you how you want to paint it, but using the paints that we've got, we're going to be painting it to the Ultramarines colours. There's more about them in the magazine. So first of all, we're going to, oh, we're going to start with a black, <coughs> excuse me, um, right there. Just dip the brush in water a little bit, dip it in the black. I want to start with the areas uh, like which are connected to the joints, such so like back and knees, elbows, you know, all the places that you've got to make sure you, you scrub and wash like when you're in the bath. Yeah, see, there we go. Also paint the gun black and pick out any other details that we think suitable for the black. Okay. There's lots of tutorials out there based on painting. I think even more hammer website or YouTube channel actually has one directly for painting these intercessors. This is really just to show you how to make a good start and as I said, get the most value. Here I'm going for the hair, simple black hair. You could color the hair any color you want if you've got the paints. But again, back to that money saving factor, it's right here. Just take your time. Any mistakes you make, you can just re-wet your brush and as the paint's still wet, you just kind of push it away. Okay. 
and I'm sure you'll be doing a good job. Now you may notice I have giant knuckles, it's just not really that. My hand was really close to the camera at the time. Looking over the camera to see the painting, it was a bit tricky, but I got there in the end. Yeah, one of the areas that was kind of hard to find just there is just underneath the armpit. Let's take your time. If you go over, say with the black onto the rest of the power armor, don't worry, just come back in with the blue and just cut that back. Okay, next on to the gun. Space Marines famous bolters. They're well known for these. Apparently they have explosive rounds. Yeah, a lot of fun. Take your time, paint the whole thing black. It might take a couple of goes, a couple of layers. But again, any overpaint, you could just repaint with the blue or whichever color that you have in association for your marine. Okay, so moving on, I'm going to be moving on to the gold. So with this gold, I decided to follow any trims that I thought was suitable. Just pop any kind of areas you want to highlight. You can refer to the magazine uh, to bring that out, but this is um, this is quite a nice little pattern I picked up that I'm used to doing, especially seeing that I use Blood Angels. But go with a magazine, do it as you choose. These are your Marines. Now, another good reason to get two of these, uh, two magazines to get the double sets of Marines, is there's currently a game from Games Workshop called uh, The Kill Team. And you have like a few characters, you put them on the board and you can play together. And it's about a 45 minute game. It's kind of a campaign cross between tabletop and wargaming. And... Again, you just kind of got into another game. You might have to buy the rule book, or if you've got a friend that already has the rules, you've got a few models in, you could just try out the game and see if you like it or not. And even way, if you don't like the game, you have a cool set of models you could put on your shelf and pose as you want. And some people turn these into dioramas, and they look absolutely amazing. I just had to clean the lens. I just had a bit of gum on it. There we go. Still trying to find it. There's the focus. So you can see there, just cover the areas you think is important. If you ever want to get edge details, just turn the brush sideways. And that will highlight the edges for you. Just see just there. Yeah, again for edges, just turn sideways and just run your brush gently over the edges. Another thing I found very helpful is turn the model. Never worry about the model being upside down unless you're putting a wash coat on it. Get used to turning that model at any angle that suits you and the brush. Okay. All right. Yeah, originally this was sent out once before by Games Workshop, kind of like a preview, and it didn't actually hit the stores. It was kind of like uh, you had to post away to actually get the item. And it must have done extremely well because it's been relaunched again uh, with access for everybody to get hold of. And in general, I was so shocked to 
see the advert on TV. But yeah, I've got to say that, you know, a few of my friends that I told about it would never really had that much interest. Started getting wide-eyed and excited, like, oh, the thing you talk about is actually on TV. And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's that cool. So anyway, this is your cheap entry, cheap doorway to the game, you know, to be able to enjoy. And there's a large community, a lot of people which are out there. Uh, maybe I'll do a video on those people which um, are quite prominent. And it's quite easy to find your way. As a group is extremely friendly. I say a group like it's a small entity. It's actually extremely large. But you'll find that out soon. One thing about metallic colours. Always clean your brush. Never forget to rinse your brush. Otherwise, you would end up having so much problems with little flecks, especially with silver and things, colours like red and, and blue. It is just really annoying. But, you know, you, you'll get used to it. And that pattern of just washing your brush, just drying it out and get back to it. Makes the life a lot easier. As you can see here, I'm just using the blue to just paint the over paint. Um, paint over the overpaint, yeah, <laughs> to paint over the mistakes I made earlier, just to tidy things up, make it look clean again. Now we're moving on to the white, and I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm just painting the, the scrolls that they have here on their arms, just there. There's actually a name for these that you'll find in law. I've totally forgotten. I'm drawing a blank at the moment. But either way, just paint those white for now. Now, white is a bit of a tricky colour. You may have to do more than one layer, and that is 100% fine. I'm not really a fan of using bright, intense white. Uh, you only tend to get that from light sources. It's very rare to find unless something's being chemically treated. And I believe that these will have been once the first layer is dry just come in for the second layer and just go over the top and you'll see that it sticks a lot better now normally when models are painted they have a thing called primer if you're just going to try the game just going to give it a go you won't necessarily need a primer and that's when you color the whole model in say a black or maybe a brown or whatever colour which is the base colour and the paint sticks to that very well and lots of people use airbrushes or spray cans you can use paint um, which is okay but you do tend to lose a lot of details if you do because the paint layer isn't very thin there we go all right, next is on to that red. And yeah, it's only a small amount of red, but we will need it either way. Now on top of the sigil just there, there's a little purity seal. That's what they call them, purity seals. And all you're gonna do is just paint that red. Now that comes from where the creators of the armor or the people that repair the armor say that the item's good. And those tags that come off of there are the kind of rewards or the the stories the the legends of that marine which has worn that armor which says what they have done i've forgotten the name of it right now but hey that's what happens okay now for the flesh color uh you could use whatever color you want purple green blue pink uh, uh, whatever color you want it's up to you it's your marine but what I tend to do is get a couple of colours and give them a nice blend. You can see here, and for a little bit of a brown. A little bit of a kind of a peach mixed colour. And just kind of blend them together with a touch of water. Now make sure you get in nice and close. Uh, so you can get those details to get in close to the model where you can. 
and all you're going to do is just paint just basically effectively using the blend mix that you've already got to cover the areas you need to once we're done with this we're just going to come back and highlight it just using the lighter color of the two on the areas like the ears and the nose just to pick those out to make it stand out Well, I'd like to use the pinky technique. Now, if you put your pinky on the model, it stops it from moving around too much and keeps your finger and your paintbrush an equal distance at all time from the model. So that distance isn't really going to change. And see back here, it's coming in, getting some more of that colour. A little bit of darker colour there, and we're just going from underneath to create like a contrast. Now moving on to the silver. Now this silver, Lead Belcher, you'll get this from Games Workshop. It is a very good paint for anything which is metallic or any vehicles or what have you. So it's good paint to have for now and in the future. Uh, especially thinking about that saving factor. And you can see right here, it instantly brings out details. Well, actually, it doesn't help the focus of the camera, but, <laughs> but it just does bring out the details of the weaponry, and it makes it look real on a micro scale. It's really good. Now, if I want a model which has got a clean weapon, so it looks it's fairly recent, it's brand new, I just tend to run the brush on the edges just to bring out details and highlights. And I just pick out the little things that stand out on this gun. You can see there, there's like little bolts and bits. And once it comes back into focus, you'll see that on the sniper site. I've just added you know, little highlights, even though it'd be truly unrealistic. Because a sniper wouldn't want anything shiny, I believe. Not that I'm a sniper at any point. And there we go, you can see the detail there. And what I'm doing here is just taking a lot of the paint off of the brush. Just so I can run across the edges just lightly. Just a little bit more should come off. And it's a combination of dry brushing, uh, which is a technique you'll find out in the future, and edge highlighting, as you can see there. And it works really well. Go along the edge there. Don't forget the inside edge, that will just make it pop. Now, that isn't the only other silver parts that you can have. You've got the little uh, gun in the pocket there, or in the holster I should say, in the pocket, in the holster. <laughs> Just come back, sort that out, and also the face plate there on the Marine, but you'll see I'll soon get there. Now some people do like to use airbrushes for these, um, but an airbrush is an expense. It is well worth it, uh, I hear a lot of people say. I haven't yet invested in one of myself, something I will do in the future, but for now. Back to the money saving factor. Just stick with the brush, and you will need the brush for details anyway, and you've got it on the magazine for like free, so use it. You know, there's no point having something for free and you don't use it, what's the point? We get in there, and we just hit the face mask with the silver. Now there is a large community out there which can assist you with painting, building, modelling, etc. Uh, if you do have an interest and you want to know more about this, I will be covering uh, next week's issue when it comes out. Pretty much going through the same things to see what we can do to make savings, and just basically bring the models to the tabletop to play with. Because it is a lot of fun. Now don't forget the area like the belt. You could use this same silver to highlight the gold. Like a high sheen. But I didn't go for that right now. Now moving on to the wash. Uh, this is quite straightforward. A wash is like a watered down version of paint. There are multiple different versions of washes. Games Workshop does a very good wash. Uh, you can buy them from elsewhere. 
Uh, this is one I tend to use. It has a lovely shine. There's a matte version, the shine version. And all I'm doing here is just placing this over the model in the areas which um, have light or should be in shadow or shade. And effectively, it's like when cartoonists draw the black line outside the, the color area uh, on a cartoon, uh, if it's not animated or digital. So it's, you've got a black line and that kind of like takes it away from the background so you can see it quite clearly. And this is doing the same thing. But it's also giving a sheen to the armour. Go over the whole thing. Uh, keep working the wash. Don't let it pull up. The only areas you want it to kind of pull is in areas of contrast. But put a little dot on the head uh, if you want to to make the hair look slick. But don't put the wash on the face um, unless you have the right colour. And black wash isn't very good for that. Uh, I'm going to use a brown wash in a little bit to put on the colours like the gold and on the face. And you'll see that it blends the colours together as well. Now get used to turning that model and just keep working that shade into those areas. Don't be afraid. You go get that in the vents, in the hands, just places where shadows will naturally form. Okay. Must admit, I do have a lot of fun doing this. And one last thing as well the backpack. You can paint that silver and then wash it and it have an effect where it looks like it's old and worn. And I tend to do that with all of my uh, power packs for these marines. Uh, it looks pretty cool. But for now, we're just using the colours we've got. We're just making that look, you know, kind of cool. And we're getting the accusatory point. You go out and buy a magazine. Buy two. Yes, you. There we go. Back to focus. It's a UFO. No, mate, it's my paintbrush. Calm down. <laughs> All right. Now, what I'm thinking is I'm going to go through these each week. I've probably already said this already. And I think I'll look at all the magazines and see where we can make savings uh, and what we can use from previous magazines, uh, techniques that we learned to enhance the next things that we get. Uh, so that we can, you know, make it quite a fulfilling experience and give this a real go. Even if you didn't like the game itself, as I said, you could always put the models on the shelf. They look pretty cool. Give it a little turn there. Let it dry for a bit. Come back and then put on the backpack. There we go. I'm actually interested in seeing where this goes to see. I mean, they've shown us what the magazine's going to have for future, but I'd like to see how they grow the community further from a games workshop point of view. It'll be interesting. Um, it'll be nice to see the diversity levels, because that's the thing that everybody seems to be gunning on about, but I'm staying away from that. I'm just looking at a cool model. There we go. So I'm coming in here with a brown wash. I'm just going to touch the areas of face. Gold. Just to make all that stand out. See there. And already it, it just pulls together quite nicely. It doesn't take you that long. And if you line up all the models, as I may have mentioned before already, uh, you will get this done in no time at all. Last one I'm going to look at is a base. I'm going to get the glue on. Uh, this bit didn't actually record the next part, but just get your seasonings on. Uh, they don't have to cover it totally, just a little bit and a little bit, so you get a touch of everything. You're still not going to eat it. No matter how tasty it smells, resist the urge. You'll then move on 
you'll add a little bit of GW flock just to keep everything together, tight together nicely. And it looks really nice. But anyway, we're coming to the end. I say I very much enjoyed our time together and look forward to seeing you next week. I had much fun. Take care, leave your comments, like, subscribe as usual. PC out.